everybody! Hi! Hi. Hi. Welcome! <laughs> nice to see you here! We're so excited that you're here for... Treasure Island! Wait, what, what play was that? Treasure Island! A little more enthusiasm? <laughs> Treasure Island! Yes! Good! Ooh. Excellent! Excellent! We're here for Treasure Island! Has anyone here read the classic Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson? Yes, you're gonna see something kind of like the book you read, but I've changed it quite a bit. And my name's Reba, and I'm the director of this play, and I also adapted it, and I had a lot of fun with this story. It sounds like actors are still backstage doing their warm-up. Can you hear them? <laughs> yeah. They're counting. It's so true. Everybody, enjoy the show. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Benbow Inn. Welcome, sir. I run the place with my boy Jim over here. It's just the two of us. You can tell me what you need. Are you looking for a hot meal or a place to stay? All of the above and more so. Most excellent. May I ask you how you heard about the place? I shipped walked and I asked around town. People said your inn was mighty fine, mighty fine. It would offer me a peaceful place to clear my head. I haven't had a hot meal and I don't know how long. Or a place to rest my head that wasn't wet and moving side to side. How long have you been out to sea, sailor? Months, maybe years. What boat do you sail on? There's been more than a few, milady. Listen, this is a fine establishment. I won't have any trouble. No shenanigans, no rapscallions, and especially no pirates. Do you hear me? Oh, not I, man. No pirates. I can't have the trouble. I assure you, I am not a pirate. I'm a poor man, hungry and tired, and I can in gold coins that I earned in a most honest way. You are most welcome, sir. Come in from the pool. Seafaring man doesn't belong to these parts. Clear the decks for pleasant action. You never see me and you don't know nothing. I ain't like all seafaring men. Genteel I am. I sing me songs on the open sea. I sing me songs on the open sea. Can be. The waves as high as the waves can be. The thieving life ain't the life for me. The thieving life ain't the life for me. Cause I ain't no pirate. Cause I ain't no pirate. I'm as rich as the king, but I promise thee. I'm as rich as the king, but I promise thee. That I earned my riches honestly. That I earned my riches honestly. No, I would not steal, not little old me. No, I would not steal, not little old me. Cause I ain't no pirate. Cause I ain't no pirate. Life ain't the life for me. Margaret! You must stay alert! A pirate ship just stopped in Bristol, and all the buccaneers have come to land and are causing mischief at the end. Silence there between decks! I'll split you double if you interrupt me song again. I'm not only a doctor, I'm also magistrate here. I won't have any trouble at this in from you, sir. I, I ask your pardon. Do you believe in pirates? Have you ever seen one? How about talking birds or island doubt in the middle of the ocean that got buried treasure? Of course you believe in treasure, don't you? Gold bars, diamonds, rubies, stuff that make you rich. Never have to work a day in your life. Have you ever held a ruby in your hand and just stared into it? It's the most beautiful thing you'd ever see. That is, aside from the sea, the ocean, that bluish greenish mass of water. You've been to the beach before, right? How about on a ship on a clear day you can see the horizon stretch beyond your dreams? And you can't quite tell where the sky stops and the water begins because they're both kind of the same color. Then there are days when the ocean roars and buckles and waves high as your mouth is crashing down. That ocean is more beautiful than any ruby or sapphire you'd ever see. The ocean's full of salt, you know. Salty smells a call. A call to adventure. Do you smell it? J 
Jim, stop dreaming, come inside. Coming. Jim, what are you doing dreaming again with all these people staying at the inn? You said you'd help me. You gave me your word. What do you need? Check on the captain, room six. What did you think? That I was a pirate? No, I just yearn for adventure. I look off to sea and imagine. My mom calls it dreaming. I would love to be on a boat, sailing the high seas, but I have to work at the inn. My mother needs me. Welcome, sir. Welcome to the Benbow Inn. My name is Jim Hawkins. Jim Hawkins? You a cabin boy? <coughs> no, I work at the inn. You make a small cabin boy anyway. A young wee thing. I'm not small, sir. I'm almost 11. The runt of the litter. A weak little puppy. I'm, I'm really quite grown, sir. I look after this inn with my mother. You protect your mother? I do, sir. Have some fighting after all. I do, sir. Can I get you anything? So call me sir. It doesn't suit me. Call me captain. Captain? Captain Billy Bones. Yes, Captain Bones. Fill my cup. I can tell we're going to be friends. What are you looking for through that telescope, sir? You're curious as a cat, aren't you, boy? Sorry, sir. Strangers. I don't like strangers. They make me spy and jump like a porpoise. You keep on the lookout for a seafaring man with one leg. I'm looking for a one-legged sailor. A one-legged? He's got a bird on his shoulder and one leg made of wood. You ever see that man, you tell me. Why? So I can run the other way, that's why. Take my telescope, boy. Are you a pirate, sir? He has the best Avenger stories. You like sword fights? He's had them. I would say walk the plank. He said it. Mutiny? Been there. Done that. He's told me all kinds of things I need to know about sailing on a ship. So I'll know when the adventure calls. Welcome, sir. Are you looking for a hot meal or a place to stay? I'm looking for someone. What? Who? We don't want any trouble here. Just a hot meal, ma'am. Right away, sir. Jim, a hot meal. Cut coming right up, sir. Here you are. Now then, can you tell me where to find my friend Billy? Come here, Sonny. A little closer. This your table from the mate Bill. While I... Here comes my old mate Bill now, bless his heart. You know me? You know an old shipmate? Black dog. I've been after you now for three days. I finally found you, Billy. Billy Bones. You made off with Captain Flint's map. You tell me where that map is. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Really, I don't. Don't play with me. You took Captain Flint's map and you're after the treasure. Did you really think you'd get away with it? Get away with what? Easy now, old brother. Just wait until after sunset. We'll be back for you. Jim, I've got to get away from here quick before they slit the black spot. What's that? It's the sun. We see chests they're after. What is the chest? Pieces of me. Pearls as big as ostrich eggs. Here, take the key. If anything happens to me, you take that chest and run. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Trunk. 
The boy! I should have torn his arm off. Black dog, you wouldn't believe old Pew. The red sky of flashing can't pull me away. Cause the sea shoes are calling my name. No treasure so great as the crashing of waves. Cause the sea shoes are calling my name. Oh, the land is a bounty, the earth brings us life. But the siren called beckons me, fills me with strife. And I can't understand it, this seafaring life. Cause the sea shoes are calling my name. Jim, slow down, Jim. I'll see no harm comes to you, Mother. I'm not afraid. All right, you're far enough away from that mess. You can open that trunk now. Why, there's nothing here at all. Coins? Just a map. What are those funny red crosses there? Bless my soul. Tim, my boy, you may have summoned on the secret of a century. That's it. That's it. The infamous pirate, Captain Flint, had buried treasure. And here is the map, the exact longitude and latitude. <coughs> Squire, you get so overheated. A map to bury treasure? Jim Hawkins, what do you say? We just leave it on the ground? Well, get up, sir. I have my own shovel. We'll get it up. Won't we, young Jim? Won't we, young Hawkins? We need a ship. We need a crew. <coughs> no, Jim, I won't let you go. Mother! I tend to agree with Mrs. Hawkins. Those cutthroats have shown us that they will stop at nothing. But, Mother, it's not fair. I can't go all. I'll rip this map up to little pieces and set fire to them so no one can ever find the treasure, and it'll just stay buried underground. You wouldn't do that, Jim. Give the map here, boy. Think of the riches, Mother. Think of all we can have and all we can do. But do you have to go? Couldn't you just wait a couple years till you're grown? That treasure won't stay secret for long. It'll be a grand adventure, Mother. Please don't hold me back. Go with Grace. Thank you, Mother. Tomorrow I leave for Bristol. We need a ship. We need a crew. We need a captain. We must proceed with absolute secrecy. My lips are sealed, Doctor. I'll get to a big sailing ship. What do you say, Hawkins? Bristol. Captain, if I could 
come upon your ship. I'm not the captain, sir. I am the cabin boy. And it looks like you are a one-legged sailor. I don't think you have any business on my ship. Jim, what did this man do to you to warrant such rudeness? Forgive me, gentlemen. I am just an old sailor, hobbled on to get a smell of the salt air. What a ship this is. Do you mind if I come aboard for just a spell? It's been a long time since I've been on a ship so grand. This way, man. Silver's the name. Long John Silver, they call me. Are there many? One like a sea frame? The country's full of them. Just like birds in the sky. I am sorry, Mr. Silver. I am so sorry for my bluntness. No hard feelings, chap. You have a boat to protect. As you can see, Mr. Silver, here we have the captain's quarters, and right next to it, the galley. What's a galley? Why, it's the prettiest kitchen you've ever seen. What a lucky cook will work in there. Actually, we haven't a cook yet. You don't have a cook? What a shame, Mr. Squire. Cooks all over England should be clamoring to show you their skills. Uh, do you have experience in this job, Mr. Silver? Oh, sure I do. I've cooked on many a boat, but never a galley so fine. <gasps> you should hire Mr. Silver! Oh, I wouldn't. The job is yours if you want it. I won't disappoint. Cabin boy, what's your favorite food? Cake! Then we'll have cake every night. I'm in need of a whole crew. I hire folks and they don't seem to come back. Oh no. Well, ain't that a shame, Mr. Squire. How many men might you be needing? Four to six, but they need to be honest sailors. Everything on this voyage needs to be above board. Aye. No buccaneer types. You'd be scared of pirates, eh? I may know some <coughs> I'll spread the word. Gather them up. You know this one, lad? No, but I can learn. Might I go along with Mr. Silver? Jim, 
Meet Captain Flint, a remarkable bird. I named you after my old captain. Your old captain was Captain Flint? Now this bird, Jim, is two, maybe 300 years old. They live forever, and no one has seen more wickedness than this bird. She sailed with Captain England, a pirate. Pirate, pirate, pieces of eight. She spent to Madagascar, Malabar, and Portobello. She was in the fishing of a red plate ships off the coast of Florida. That's where she learned pieces of eight. And no wonder, Jim. They fished up 350,000 silver pieces. What would you do with all that silver? She was in the Bay of Bengal and with Captain England himself, aboard the Portuguese ship carrying diamonds. And to look at her, you'd think she was a baby. Pieces of eight, treasure, X marks the spot. She's seen a lot of treasure. For her little bird brain can sniff out treasure, Jim. Even if you're not looking for it. She's like a compass for gold. Good to have when you go on an adventure like ours. But we're not looking for treasure, are we? Of course not, boy. But if we were to happen upon it, it wouldn't be a bad thing, now would it? I suppose not, sir. Does she fight, sir? Nary a nipple. <laughs> don't tell the squire that we saw old black dog. Why wouldn't I? You don't want to worry a man like Squire Trelawney unnecessarily, Jim. He's got a lot on his mind right now. A lot on his mind. My lips are sealed. Matey, you're just smart as paint. Black dog! Black dog! You plan brain. I don't like this idea, Margaret. Not one bit. Doctor, he's my boy. And he's old enough to adventure on his own. He's just a boy. But to have a woman on a sailing ship, it's not proper. There's a superstition that says it's bad luck. I don't care about your superstitions. I will work as hard as any man aboard and more so. Only you will know my secret. Please, let me be close to my boy. knows more about this voyage than I do, and I want the truth right now. What are you talking about, Captain? I was told this was merely a trade ship to import spices from the south. A search for buried treasure <gasps> is not what I had in mind, and the very thought of it attracts pirates. I'll have nothing to do with it. What has the crew said? They know we're on a voyage to find buried treasure. <gasps> Even Silver's bird has been squawking about it. Who told? Then it's true. It should have never been said. Squire Trelawney. Oh, upon my word, I never told us all. Was it you, Jim? I didn't say a word. Have you let anyone see that map, Jim? No, sir. I've kept it in my bag this whole time. Let me see it. Captain. 
Captain Flint smack. You'll still take us there, won't you smell it? We've already left port, and we will of course give you a share of the loot. This is a very risky venture. I will continue as your captain on two conditions. The first condition is that the map is locked up in the safe box and I have the only key. Jim, it's in the best interest of the voyage that you give Captain Smart that map. Yes, sir. The second condition is that we cut the tips off their knives and I'll enlist you men to help me. Sailors, present your knives! But how will we cut the strings, sir? Honest hands never object to having their knives tipped. My orders. Why are you men standing here? <laughs> Do as you're told. You too, Long John. But how will I cut the meat, sir? I must have sharp knives to prepare the food. Very well. Get your stuff, lad. is making me move to the captain's quarters, but I'd rather be forward with you. Supposing I ask the captain to change buttons with me after we set sail. The one honest man aboard is Captain Smollett. Honest? Sure. But a downright humble. Captain's <sighs> ways are captain's ways. I wish you were the captain of the Long John. I bet you could captain it. I bet you could captain the, better, the boat better than he could. Look down there, boy. What do you see? A shark! That's old Nicodemus, the shark. Why is he following us? We've been feeding him ever since we left port. We have? With potato peelings. What What are you going to do after this voyage, Long John? Would you like to come live with me? See, all a lot of money. It's just my mother and me. Anyhow, you always come visit, right? We'll always be mates. Certain we will. No, it's fit into the sea, son. It's always lucky to spit into the ocean when you're on a ship. Just as long as we don't fit on old Mr. Nicodemus, because I don't think he'd like that very much. He might develop a taste for you. Just joking, lad. Old Mr. Nicodemus isn't bones anymore. Is that another shark? No, that's a dolphin, a seaman's friend. Dolphin over the bow is a good sign. I guess nobody knows where we're headed to, except the dolphin and the squire. Captain's Log, we've been traveling for 13 days and still no land in sight. The crew is abated now. Perhaps they aren't men of fortune as I originally suspected. on the ship forever. Are we lost? No, Jimmy. Captain Smart knows where he's going and is keeping us right on track. How do you know? Look up there. What do you see? A bunch of stars. So many stars. I see a soup ladle pouring a nice clam chowder. Do you see it? Soup in the sky? No. Just connect the stars. See that big dipper spoon? Oh yes, I kind of do. I do! All right, there. The flow of that nice sky chowder goes straight to the North Star. There's a W! No, you, you've gone too far and spilled soup on the Queen Cassiopeia. That's the North Star, right between the Queen and the soup. But that's behind us. And that tells us we're not headed north, are we? Look that way, between the bow and the starboard side. See those three stars? That's the belt of Orion, his arm and his shoulder pointing straight up. Follow his sword, and that, my dear friend, is south. So we're headed south. Southeast. Southeast, where the treasure is. I mean, southeast is where we must be going. <laughs> Land ho! Land ho! Let me see it. We're so close, I can smell the treasure. I can taste it. What does it taste like? The future. Me on my own island away from the law. To the future! Long John, land is in sight. Do you see it? Land ho, land ho! 
Is it time for mutiny? Time to make Smollett as gentlemen walk the plank. Feed the shark. We gotta get our hands on that map. Can we be alone? All right. Matthew is one of us. One of us? A man of fortune? Yes, sir. What buccaneers have you sailed with? Old Firebeard himself. <gasps> Firebeard. I have never heard of Firebeard. Sure you heard of Firebeard. You've never heard of Firebeard? He's the meanest, biggest. They call him Firebeard because his beard is, you know, red. And once he set fire to it. Firebeard, hit the deck for Firebeard. Captain Flint's heard of him. Oh, I imagine you're looking for a share of the treasure. Sure he is, Long John. All for one and one for all. He deserves it, just like a lot of us. Very well. Plenty enough to go around, I say. We strike tonight. No! No! Not tonight. Smollett's a good navigator. We've got to use his skills. When do we strike? We strike on the way home, sending them all overboard in one fell swoop. We lost them in a storm, we say. Limit the struggle, cut our losses, and go home with the treasure. Not as Kettle's old firebeard. Look at the job done, I say. <laughs> all for one and one for all. Song's treasure's mine. And mine. And mine. I can't wait to see that little cat boy cry for his mom as he walks the flag. Mommy! <laughs> shore alone. As soon as they are off the boat, we turn the ship around and head home. Maroon them? Captain, I do not intend to lose money on this trip. It's our only option. But what about the treasure? We came all this way. Doctor, talk some sense into the boy. We cannot ruin all of them, Captain. They aren't all pirates. What's his name? Matthew! But Doctor, he is a pirate. He's the meanest of them all. He sailed with the great Captain Firebeard. Oh dear. We must listen to the Captain. I hate to do it and lose all this money, but it's our only chance for survival. Tonight there's nothing that can be done except to sleep. Tomorrow we use the map to bait them to the shore, and then we head home. Good night, gentlemen. Long John Silver was the best friend I knew. And now I know he wasn't really my friend after all. I have eight hours to find the treasure myself and return to the boat before the captain wakes up. He left the key for me on purpose, knowing that I can sneak out without a sound, slip into a dinghy, and run ashore. No one will know. No one will hear me, and I'll be back before the break of day. Yes, at least now. We sail for the King of England. 
How did you end up here? First, I was on Captain Flynn's ship. We buried the treasure, and we made a map. This map? Yes, indeedy, that's the very map we made. Then we sailed away, planning to come back for it. I was. But that ship got taken by another ship, flying pirate colors. We circled back to dig up the treasure, but we couldn't find the treasure because we didn't have the map. So what did you do? We walked around in circles until one day all the hands got aboard. They said, Ben Gunn, you buried that treasure. You can find it on your own. And they left me here marooned. Is that a gentlemanly thing to do? What says you? Rude. Rude, says you. You got a squire on that ship. Oh, yes, a squire and a doctor and a captain and a crew. Who tells them Ben Gunn will work any job, any job at all, at all for a rind of cheese. All the treasure I will pay for cheese and gold. <laughs> Come up to my cave. Right there, I have pearls as big as ostrich eggs. My word, I don't know what you're talking about by the rules of squire and doctor. Everything is set. <laughs> what about me, Captain? Will you arm me with a weapon, just in case? <laughs> You're a woman, m'lady. The squire will protect you. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> The red sky a flashing can't pull me away Cause the sea she's a calling my name No treasure so great as the crashing of waves Cause the sea she's a calling my name Oh the land is a bounty, the earth brings us life But the siren call beckons me, fills me with strife and I can't understand it, this seafaring light, cause the sea she's a calling my name. I didn't expect it would be just the three of us going ashore. Someone has to stay back and guard the boat. But me of all people, I only got one leg, see. I will only slow you down. I've noticed your keen sense of direction, Long John. We need a good navigator on shore. Aye, but we only need one captain, sir. Doctor! Captain! Jim, thank heavens you're safe! Oh, I am at the most peculiar fellow. Ben Dunn! Ben Dunn! Well, well, well. Here we are all together again. Top of the morning to you, Jim. And the map is dry. Jim. We were worried about you. I got you, boy. Nice. Give me the map and we'll be on our way. Take one more step forward and your cabin boy will suffer at the end of my night. Now just do as you're told, boy, and I won't hurt you. Just walk forward. Just follow the map. See, Jim and I, we got to find that treasure. It's going to be ours. You, Captain, Doctor, you're going to walk the other way now. Now you hear me. You are not to touch a hair on that boy's head. You can have your treasure, but I want him returned to us safe once you find it. What say you? Peace is me. Peace is me. Find Ben Gunn! That's the last good word you'll hear out of me. I'd sooner touch. 
such a crow! Let's get our treasure, boy. But how will we carry it? We'll manage walking this way. This Ben gun might be our only hope. said goodbye. He would never force a man to walk the plank with land in sight. You, it's hello, goodbyes all over the place. We have bananas on board. We left the port with them. Captain Firebeard would never stand for that. We set sail on a Friday, and this morning the sun came up red. Shiver me timbers. I like the sound of this. And of all unlucky things to have a woman on deck, it's quite progressive, but so unlucky. When I heard there was a woman on board, I thought the ship would sink right in the middle of the ocean and we'd all be feeding the fishes. Who's the woman? Is it you? There's no woman here. It could be any one of us. We could all be sisters, mothers, daughters. It could be you, Israel, or you, William. Not I. I'm not a woman. Well, I am. I am that woman. Hear the ring of my sword and know what I can do. I'm your captain now. Untie this man immediately. Lower that pirate flag at once and replace it with the flag of England. Other pirates will be looking here. To us, on the Hispaniola to leave. What are we waiting for? An old cook with a crutch to come back with a few gold pieces? You, follow my orders now. Aye, aye, captain. <laughs> I reports back to duty. I'll be your chef again. I? No. We have a new chef. His name is Ben Dunn. And he will be serving us all the cheese we want. <laughs> Glorious ship, 
Praise be. Throw Silver in the brig and the other pirates too. No use. They all marooned themselves when they found out I was wounded. They couldn't stand there let's have a lady captain. Mother, is that you? Jim, what adventure we've had. We'll pick up a new crew in another port. I'm sorry. Truly I am. For what, Jim? I knew Ben had the treasure. I tricked you. And I kidnapped you, so I guess we're even. But it's not fair that you stand trial for mutiny. You're the best friend I've ever had. The ship is docked? Yes, they all sure, except Benda. He's keeping watch, so you can't save. I can't? I can't. It's a real shame, matey. It's a shame to be locked up like this, away from the food or the freedom. You have the key there? I do. I'm sorry. I truly am. I never meant to hurt anyone. Not anyone at all. Be a friend now, Jim. Unlock that door. That's my matey. If ever the day comes that I can help you, I will. All you need to do is say my name and old Long John Silver will come hobbling aboard to help out his good friend Jimmy. You won't be a pirate anymore, will ya? You won't steal? From now on, my course will be an honest one. Oh, this is why. Shiver me timbers. I'm glad that happened to me. I took that before I promised not to steal. Here, you take it. No, you may need it. You have to buy food. <coughs> All right, then here, take Captain Flint. Be her good and put her below deck when there's any women around, will ya? You may be, need be needing a mate or a captain. Who'd you think would come hobbling along but old Long John Silver? We will see each other again, won't we, Mr. Silver? Certain we will, maybe. Certain we will. Well, to make a long story short, we made a good cruise home. All of us had an ample share of the treasure we used wisely, or foolishly, according to our natures. Captain Smollett is now retired from the sea. Ben Gunn got a thousand pounds, which he spent or lost in three weeks. <laughs> Most of it on cheese. I can tell you one thing, though. I will never go back to that cursed island. The worst dreams I ever have when I hear it surf booming around its coasts. Or stare upright in my bed with a sharp voice of Captain Flint ringing in my ears. Pieces of me! Pieces of me! Good bird. Good bird. <laughs>